Dr. Suresh here, your Games Academy faculty for biochemistry. So, as a part of our FMGE case based test series for the uh, session June 2023, I have come up with another case based evaluation on uh, inborn errors of protein metabolism. So, first we will see the question or the case. So, as for the case, what it is suggesting, a 63 year old man presented with sudden onset of severe hip pain for the past one month. Physical examination revealed black pigmentation of sclera and blackening of ear lobes. The unit darkened on standing in air. X-ray showed degenerative changes in the right hip joint. Biochemical investigations which included urine benedict test and ammonical silver nitrate test positive. So here look for the keywords. The thing is he is a 63 year old man. Right, and he is having severe hip pain for the past one month. Right, some bone related disease you can expect. And physical examination, if you see black pigmentation of soft tissues, like this is sclera and ear lobes are getting black, and that means something is depositing on the soft tissues. And urine also, after collecting, when it allowed to stand for some time in the air, it is getting dark. Right, otherwise, if you see the urine will be like pale yellow color. X ray showed degenerative changes in right hip joint as he is suffering with the hip pain from past one month. So, biochemical investigations they suggested that urine benedict stress is positive and ammonical silver nitrate is also positive. So, we should know that benedict stress is for reducing sugars. But here, whatever the complications are there, nothing to do with the reducing sugar. So, we should think beyond the line. Right, so based on this case, the probable Questions what you can ask yourself like what might be the probable diagnosis and you have to justify that, what is the cause of the disorder and explain the cause of darkening of urine understanding. That means normally urine is pale yellow, it will not be darkened when you allow it to stand for some time in the air. Explain the biochemical basis of common signs and symptoms of the disorder, whatever you are based on the diagnosis, how the condition is diagnosed and how the condition is managed. So these are all the questions if you are aware. However the case is asked, it is easy for you to answer. Right, so let us go to the explanation for this case. Yeah, first to talk about, it is the first inborn error of metabolism to be identified. So what is that? This is the clear cut case of alkaptinuria. What is alkaptinuria? Alkaptinuria is a phenylalanine metabolism defect along with phenylketonuria okay but in the history they mentioned that this is the genetic disorder first identified so there is Garat tetrad that means set of four inborn errors okay they are known as Garat tetrad okay one is albinism albinism because of deficiency of the enzyme tyrosinase so that is another case basic question that we will discuss under albinism the features and symptoms alkaptinuria just now we are discussing about it because of the absence of the enzyme homogenistic acid dioxygenase. You can say homogenistic acid oxidase. So this enzyme is crucial to convert homogenistic acid to malate and h 2 state. Okay, the proper degradation of tyrosine. If this is not happening, homogenistic acid is accumulates and causes whatever the symptoms we have gone through in the case. Right, and cystinuria is because of the defect in the transporter located in the kidney for the reabsorption of cystine. As this rea uh, the transporter is absent, cystine is started excreting in the urine and it causes kidney stones as well and ureteral stones as well. Pentosuria again, pentosuria is because of the deficiency of the enzyme xylitol dehydrogenase, it has nothing to do with any complications. The uh, enzyme deficiency here is xylitol dehydrogenase. Only xylitol will not be processed and this will be excreted in the urine. High levels of xylitol in the urine. So to talk about alkaptinuria, it is the first inborn of uh, metabolism to be identified. Garrett is a scientist who described the features of alkaptinuria in 1902. Autosomal recessive in condition and in its incidence is 1 in 250,000 births. Yeah. If you see the proper metabolism of phenylalanine, so phenylalanine and thyrosine both are aromatic amino acids and out of these two phenylalanine we have already learned that phenylalanine is essential whereas thyrosine is non-essential. Why? Because 
tyrosine can be synthesized from phenylalanine. If your diet contains phenylalanine, that is sufficient to supply you tyrosine as well. And moreover, whatever the biochemical important substances are coming from phenyl are through tyrosine. If phenylalanine is not converting to tyrosine, there is a defect, phenylketonuria. Okay, that is again inborn error of protein metabolism. That is a different case. We will discuss again. So here we are talking about uh, alkaptonuria. So this tyrosine will be processed further to para-hydroxyphenylpyruvate and to homogenistic acid. And this homogenistic acid has to proceed further to malleable ester state, ester state and fumarate. Right. As homogenistic oxidase is an iron-dependent enzyme, it is an iron-dependent enzyme. If in case of in absence of this enzyme, homogenistic acid not further processed. So high levels of homogenistic acid in the circulation, it starts depositing in the soft tissues like uh, uh, ear lobes, okay, and uh, pinna, cheeks. That's the reason blackening of the soft tissues. So and high levels of homogenistic acid in the circulation means it will pass through kidney in the urine. So this homogenistic acid is strongly reducing in nature. So as high levels of uh, homogenistic acid in the urine, it reacts with oxygen in the air and convert into black in color, right? And it starts accumulating in the bones also, causing uh, uh, examples like spine, hip, hip joint, okay, arthritis, okay, and black pigmentation of cartilages like ochronosis is again the uh, chief symptom of this alkaptonuria. So calcification of coronary arteries, aortic wall, secondary of ochronosis, urolithiosis in middle or late adulthood because. Uh, homogenistic acid is start accumulating and it causes urolithiosis as well. So the diagrams, the symptoms are homogenistic acid on standing auto oxidizes to corresponding quinones, benzopinone estate that polymerizes to give dark color. Okay, that's why alkaptonuria, otherwise known as black urine disease. Remember, that's why alkaptonuria, otherwise known as black urine disease. Okay. And oxidation of homogen state to benzopinone ester state by polyphenol oxidase to form polymerize to black color pigment, alkaptan bodies. Alkaptan bodies will be accumulating in the soft tissues, which give the characteristic feature of chronosis uh, in the cornea of eye, as well as ear lobes, kidney, nose, hands, as well as in the spine, arthritis. Okay. Otherwise, black staining of diaper, earliest sign, in if, if it is a genetic defect in the babies. Earliest sign of alkaptonuria is black staining. As babies are uh, diapers, they'll be using for uh, preventing the leakage of urine. So this urine on standing converts the diapers into black stains. So how to diagnose? So there are several tests for alkaptonuria. One is perichloride test, another is benedict test. Third one is aminical uh, silver nitrate test, and fourth is quantitative quantitation of homogenistic acid in urine by high pressure liquid chromatography, identification of homogenistic acid by gas chromatography or mass spectrophotometry. Right, perichloride test is again for reducing substances. Yes, if there is a presence of uh, uh, homogenistic acid in the urine that turns to blue green color, that is for a positive perichloride test. Benedict test, so far we have learned that Benedict test is for uh, reducing sugars. But the thing is, Benedict's test not only for reducing sugars, for reducing substance. So vitamin C and homogenistic are the two non-carbohydrates which give positive to Benedict's test. So here, vitamin C is positive or it is beneficial. Whereas homogenistic acid is not beneficial, it is abnormal condition. So Benedict's test is, uh, it is a test for strong reducing substance. So homogenistic acid being reducing in nature, it will be positive. So you shouldn't conclude that the person is diabetic. Remember, he is non-diabetic, but he is suffering with alkaptonin. Ammonical silver nitrate test is also really positive, right? So treatment, it is a not dangerous and it requires no specific treatment. Only the thing is restriction of uh, phenylalanine in the diet, okay, and tyrosine as well. Administration of vitamin C, because uh, vitamin C reacts with the reducing substances to convert to less reducing. So it prevents the oxidation of homogenistic acid to uh, benzophenol acetate and it reduces polymerization as well and treatment deposition on the connective tissue. So this is the only the treatment. So nitro, uh, nitrosone is a drug that is a FDA approved drug for treatment of tyrosinemia type 1. Para hydroxyphenyl pyruvate dioxinase inhibitor. This is okay. Nitisinone. Nitisinone is a uh, drug which used to treat for tyrosinemia type 1. The same way as it is inhibiting para hydroxyphenyl pyruvate dioxinase, there is no formation of homogenistic acid. So 
it can reduce the complications. So another similar case you can make out, as I said, black uh, blackening of the diapers. A mother came to the hospital with her two months old child with the complaint that diapers used for the child were stained with the dark pupils. On exposure to air, the stains become more blackish. Bending stress is positive, but because of this is negative. So remember here, if the baby is type 1 diabetic, okay, our bending stress is positive and glucose oxygen stress is supposed to be positive. But here, glucose oxygen stress is negative, so and blackening of diaper indicates presence of homogenistic acid, which is strongly reducing in nature. So that's all about alkaptoria. Hope you understood. Thanks for listening. Thank you.